Manchester City nil, Arsenal nil. Very boring game today. I'm going to come on here and give credit to Arsenal because I thought they defended outstandingly. I thought Saliba and Gabriel were excellent. Even though Arsenal did play a bit dirty with their tackling. Um, you can't really complain too much because we got what we deserved today, which was one point and not zero. And we were lucky not to lose, in my opinion. I know a lot of people will, like, come on and, like, do shows like this and, like, slate Arsenal saying that they were rubbish. But they were actually very good today. I know they defended for a lot of that second half. But if they came out and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with us, the same thing that happened last season where they lost 4-1 at the Etihad would have happened. So I do kind of understand why Mikel Arteta set up Arsenal like that. And I think they had the better chances today. They had the Jesus one where he nearly got a touch onto it. They had the Jesus one side net him. They had the Trossard one, Ortega saved it. Um, they had... Um, um, the Jesus one that went wide as well, I think. So Jesus had about three chances. Or, like, and even four with the one where he got his foot out. Um, so, I think Arsenal were the better team today in, in terms of chances created anyway. I know City had 72% possession and Arsenal only had 28% of the ball. But, in terms of chances, Arsenal were better today. And if they were clinical, we would have lost the game. One shot on target at home is embarrassing. I know we're playing Arsenal and it's not like we're playing like Burnley or something like that. But it's still not acceptable. What The biggest game of our season as of so far and we're having one shot on target. And don't forget, this game is not at the Emirates. This game is at the Etihad, which is supposedly meant to be a fortress, according to a lot of City fans. And this season at the Etihad, it's been a real struggle for us to break down teams that have played with, with a low block. Um, and we're becoming a team that has no leaders and we're becoming a team that's relying on like individuals. And we never used to be a team like that. Worst performance at home I've seen from City in a long time. Because even in the Brentford one last season, even though we lost the game, we were still creating more chances in that game than what we did in the game against Arsenal today. And I know the opposition against Brentford is a lot worse than Arsenal, but... And we lost that game and we didn't lose today, but... In terms of, like, chances that day, we were, we were better chance created-wise than um, the game today the only real good chance we had where i actually thought we might score was that Kovacic chance that went wide the rest of the chances were like half chances for city like they were either like blocked or like they were like sight as that goal that they would they weren't really clear-cut chances apart from that Kovacic one arsenal had about Three or four, maybe more clear-cut chances. So, in terms of chance created, they were better than us. I know people will slate them for sitting back a lot of the game, but I don't blame them for doing that because they set up exactly perfectly. And I think Arteta knew that we struggled against low blocks because he probably watched a lot of us last season because he used to be the assistant. I mean, this season, sorry, because he used to be the assistant manager. But the tactics from Arsenal were spot on. They played better than us. 
I know we did dominate the game in terms of like possession, but dominating the game in, in terms of possession is not as good as um dominating the game in terms of chances. I know we dominated the game in terms of chances in terms of actual number of chances, but in terms of quality of chances, Arsenal were way better than us in terms of quality of chances. I still believe we will finish above Arsenal because I didn't really see Arsenal as like a massive like attacking threat that really scared me today. It was just that we played really poor and we made them look better than what they are. I'm not saying they're a shit side. Sorry for the for the language because I know there's obviously adults out there and children that don't like language. So that's why I'm saying sorry for about the language. But I'm not going to come on here and say Arsenal are a rubbish side when they're not. But I'm not going to come on here and say that they are completely outstanding as 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 well because we made them look a lot better than what they are. They're a good side, but player for player um in terms of starting 11, they shouldn't be getting near us. But because of our naivety in the transfer window um and them actually having a good transfer window, it meant that they had more quality coming off the bench. Um, and I think there was only three City players that played well today. That was Rico Lewis, who came on for Nathan Aki, because Aki got injured. Hopefully it's not too bad. And um, the other two were Givardio and Bernardo Silva. Those were the only players that were actually trying to do something. I love Kevin De Bruyne. He's a City legend, the greatest player in our history, but he was absolutely dog shit today. Sorry for the language again. And Haaland was awful today as well. And Foden. A lot of our players that normally turn up for us today didn't have good games today. And that's the reason why we're leaving this game with one point and not three. Because too many play players today for City had five and sixes out of ten performances. And um, some of um, the um, City players today were even worse. Like, I'd say De Bruyne was worse than the five and a six. Um, I thought... At the back, um, even though we kept the clean sheet, we were very sloppy with our passing. I think we gave away a corner twice from um, stupid back passes. And um, we gave Arsenal an opportunity to create a chance from the corners. And they're very good from corners as well. So that was stupid. Um, and I know Ortega is a good goalkeeper in terms of like saves. But he just doesn't suit Manchester City. In like another Premier League team that isn't so like possession based, he'd be one of their most important players and one of their best players. But because he plays for Man City under Pep Guardiola and we're a possession based side, he doesn't suit City in terms of the way we play. So I don't think he's going to be at City next season. I think he's going to leave because Edison won't be benched from now on when he comes back and other than the cup games of course and he's he's um doesn't suit the style of play so he won't be at city next season and i think there's a genuine possibility that de bruyne's not at city next season I think, I love him, obviously, but I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to Saudi Arabia. Or maybe to, like, some team in Belgium or something like that. Or maybe a MLS, because I think he looked really good in his first couple of games when he came back from injury. But since, like, about maybe, like, February time, he's been, like, sort of a bit off it. And when he's on it compared to when he's not on it, is a big difference to City, especially this City team. Because 
we're we're a team that relies on individuals um this season and um we've always been a quite wasteful side in, in front of goal but i don't think we've ever been as wasteful as this season apart from maybe pep's first year In all the games we've played against the big six, we've conceded either stupid goals or or missed a stupid amount of, of chances. And if you do that against the big six, in my opinion, you don't deserve to win the Premier League title. Because I know Liverpool haven't done that well against the top six this year, but um, they haven't like drawn against stupid... Mid table teams as well, like Crystal Palace. Um, who else should we draw with that that um we should have beaten? Crystal Palace. Um, Chelsea. We should have beaten. I know Chelsea are a big club, but they're a mid table club now. Um. Um, Chelsea twice. Tottenham 3-3. Free, free. I know they're a top six club, but we should have won that game because they had loads of injuries in that game as well. Um, and we were we were winning in that Tottenham game, and in a lot of the the games against the top six, we've been winning, and we've and we've thrown it away. And today, um, there was no desire when the five minutes of injury time came out. A city side of old would have gone all out and got the, at least, like, created loads of good chances to get the three points. But there was no desire towards the end. It looked like we were happy with a draw, which you don't normally see from a city side. Because we might not always beat the big six in every season, because obviously the Premier League's the best league in the world and you can't win every single match. But... We're never normally as bad against the top six as we have been this season. And we and we don't normally draw as many games either. We normally either win or lose. Um, but this season, the draws have been absolutely ridiculous. And in loads of them, we should have won as well. And in the defeats... Um, it's been like jammy, a lot of jammy goals conceded. Wolves' own goal. Palace, stupid penalty given away. Um, even though we, we drew against Palace, that, that was a draw, not a loss. But the Arsenal away game, Martinelli deflected shot. And then the Bailey one was a deflected shot as well, wasn't it? Um. But if I was to do a player rating today, I'd do Ortega. Can't really fault him too much. I don't think he was that good, but I don't think he was that bad. I'd say probably a 6 out of 10. Manuel Akanji. Um, 7 out of 10. No, no, not 7 actually. 7 is a bit high, I think. 6.5. Um... Gavardio, I'm going to give him a 7.5. Man of the match today, Gavardio. I've fought with him a lot since he's been at City, but today he was absolutely um, brilliant. I know a brilliant performance for 7.5 is quite low for a brilliant performance, but considering his performance didn't really go towards anything in terms of like us getting the win. I know he's a defender, but I don't think... For that reason alone, I can give him more than a 7.5. Um, who Ruben Diaz. He was all right. I don't think he was that good, but I don't think he was that bad. Six. Um, um, who else have we got now? Ake. He did have a decent chance with the header when before he went off injured. But because he didn't play a lot of the game... I'm going to go 5.5. If he played longer, he could have maybe got higher, but because he went off before half-time, I'm going to give him a 5.5. The midfield, De Bruyne, 
This might sound harsh, but I'm going to go 4 out of 10. Um, probably one of the best... Uh, not one of the best, sorry. Definitely not one of the best. Um, one of the worst games I've ever seen from him. And then midfield, Rodri. He wasn't bad, but he was nowhere near his usual levels. Um, I'd say probably uh, 6.5. Um, and then Kovacic. 6, 6.5 as well. We weren't that bad, but... He did have our best chance on goal, so... That's why 6.5. Um, and then Phil Foden. He's been excellent this season. Probably our best player. But unfortunately, it's going to have to be a 3 out of 10. Because he was just not in the game. Obviously, that was because a lot of the game he wasn't getting passed to. but And he did come off fairly early in the second half. But... It's going to have to be a 3 out of 10. And then Haaland. Um, it's going to be a 4 out of 10. That one where he like sort of like miskicked it. That was just embarrassing. I'm a City fan. And I don't like to say stuff like that about our players. But I've got to be honest with that one. Um, and then... Bernardo Silva. Um, seven as well. Seven. Not 7.5. Seven, seven. Which is a point five lower than Gavardio. And then the bench. Rico Lewis. Um, seven as well. I thought he did well when he came on. Fair play to Rico. Um... And then Jack and um, Doku. I'd give Jack a 6.5. And I'd give Doku a 6. Um, I thought both of those players made a bit of a difference. But the thing is with Doku. If he actually had M product. Then he'd actually have a chance of getting to the world class level. But the thing is. He can't shoot at the moment in current time. Very well. And he can't pass a ball into the box very well either. So. That's why. Now that Grealish is back. He should be starting over Doku. And he should be a regular in the team as well. Because I think Jack did well when he came on too fair. Um, is that all? Uh, should I do the referee and like maybe Pep? Pep in terms of his team selection. I would have started John Stones. I know people might say he wasn't fully fit, but if he's on the bench, then surely that means he's fully fit. I know some people might say it's to like make up squad numbers, but <coughs> in my opinion, if you're on the bench, you should be fully fit. Otherwise, it makes no sense whatsoever to be on the bench. Because I think with Stones, we would have had much more control of the game. And we probably would have created more chances as well. Um, I'd say Pep probably... You can't fault many of his decisions. Because we didn't have that many options in terms of like the goalkeeper. Because Edison was out. And um, Walker was out as well. So I'd say probably for Pep, probably a 6.5. And, um, for, um, the referee, um, I know a lot of people say that he sided with City, but I just thought he was, like, like, um, sort of making the game, like, be very slow. He was, like, given a lot of, like, decisions that weren't necessarily, like, sort of, like, required, in my personal opinion, to give. Um, I'd probably say... Uh, 3 out of 10 because I think if he let the game flow a bit more then maybe the quality of the actual match might have been better You'd, who knows really Um, as, as of for the league title th the thing I have is that I don't personally see 
Liverpool dropping that many points. They might probably drop points to someone like Everton away or like Tottenham at home, but I don't like um, see City winning all nine games. And that's what we have to do if we are to win the league. Because the games that worry me from now to the end of the season with City are... I'm scared for the Spurs away game because we've never won there in the Premier League. I know we won there in the FA Cup, but cup football doesn't really like mean anything in terms of like in regards to the league. And um, what else was I going to say? Spurs and uh, Crystal Palace away because Selhurst Park is always a game that we don't do that well in. Because we either like have a draw there or we like scrape it. Um, and who else do we have? We have Wolves at home is another game that, that worries me because, like, some of the time, Wolves can be, like, a team that gives City a lot of problems. Like, um... That's a game that scares me because they beat us earlier on in the season. I know that was like the Molyneux, but the last time they beat us in a season was in a season that they did the double over us. So I know that doesn't really mean anything because it was a few years ago now and it was in the last season that we didn't win the league. But it still like gives me like doubts about it, if you know what I mean. Um, but f- from like next season... We can't be having Carl Walker as the captain. We've got to have either Rodri as the captain or Ruben Diaz, I think. Or maybe even give it to someone like, maybe like a Kanji or Stones. Just don't give it to Carl Walker. Because he's not a leader on the pitch and he's not a leader off it either. I know he didn't play today, but we just need to get like an actual proper captain in there that can like lead by example all the time. Um... But that's the end of the video. I know it's been quite a long one, but I just want to wish you a happy Easter. Even if you're not really an Easter person and like you don't really celebrate it that much, then um, just enjoy your time off like work or school or whatever you're off from. And if you're not off, then I feel bad for you, but it is what it is. You'll get your time off soon at some point, but um, see you in the next one. I'm I'm obviously going to the Aston Villa match, so there might not be a reaction for that. Um, and there might just be like videos that I've taken from the game. Um, cause I was supposed to be going to the Luton one, but I'm not going to that one anymore. Cause like there was trains issues and stuff like that, and also I had like people coming over as well, like a cousin and a person that's like a friend to my cousin, so. That's why I couldn't go to the Luton one. But I'm going to the Wolves one at home as well. And um, I'm going to try and get tickets to the Chelsea semi-final. But at this moment in current time, my chances ain't looking too high. Because um, the last time I tried to get them, it was like season ticket holders only. And apparently Tuesday for Citizens, which I am, um, can get them. But um, by that point, maybe um, all the tickets could be gone. So if I happens and they're all gone then obviously I won't go and I'll have to still do reaction but it will be from home and not from like Wembley or anything like that um but um I'll see you guys in the next one quite city city till we die